Hi, welcome back. I'm Janelle from Brand Junk In New. This is the third installment of Hold Me to the Hoard. It is a series that I've put together to show you the hoard, the junk piled at the end of my kitchen that I've collected over the summer at flea markets, thrift stores, estate sales, auctions, those types of places. Some of it I even picked off of trash piles. So my goal is to show it to you in hopes that you will fall in love with some of it. Visit my Etsy shop. It's all available to you there. Um, aside from maybe a few things that I rediscover that I love and end up keeping for my own house. So um, let's get to it. Our goal is to keep all of our videos under 30 minutes and I'm saying that out loud so that I hold myself accountable for it. So here we go. Um, we've got this amazing uh, antique lunch pail. It's a coal miner's lunch pail. Very cool, very cool. Um, my friend Crystal, back in my hometown of Hughesville, Pennsylvania, Swank's new to you. Um, I think she pulled this out of her storage unit special for me because she knew that I would love it. Um, very cool, old, rusty lunch pail. Uh, it is challenging to open, took me a minute to figure out, but it's definitely not kid friendly. It wasn't meant for kids, or maybe kids were just better at this kind of stuff back in the day. Um, but it does, I don't know if I can show you, it does open and close. There we go. It opens and closes, it seals tight. It's pretty clean inside. I mean, it's rusty because it's super old, um, probably from the early 1900s, maybe a, maybe a little bit later. Um, it also, I think you can open it I can't get it open. I haven't played with it too much on the top, but I think you can open it up here to kind of reach in, but I'm going to check that out further and do a little more research. Um, it's still operational. It's super sturdy. Nothing is like rotten and ready to fall off. Uh, it's got a wooden handle here. The handle operates really well. The lid you saw seals tight. Um, very cool if you've got rustic decor, if you love antiques and the primitive look, um, this one is for you. So very cool lunch bag can keep keep some special trinkets in there probably not food not food um, let's see where do I want to go next so inside I've got this really cool enamel pan so let's look at the enamel pan uh, it's like 14 maybe 9 by 13 but a little bit bigger I would actually call it maybe 10 by 13 it's humongous big roaster pan um, or casserole dish covered so it also has the lid which is pretty rare you don't find a lot of the old enamel wear with the lids. Um, they do make reproductions that have lids, but this is definitely a legit old one. Um, it has some really minor spots where the enamel's chipped off. Um, there's a spot as well where there's some rust. I guess that one's a little bigger, but there are some spots where the enamel chipped off, but overall it's in really good condition. I haven't cleaned it yet, but I'll clean it before I ship it to you. Um, and then I guess we'll look at the rest of it once we get it unloaded because it is also full of stuff. So if you saw the original video, there's a chair over here and all this stuff was stacked on top. So inside um, are some estate sale finds. Oh, sorry about the noise. Are some estate sale finds. Um, this one I really loved, but it's not in very good condition. And I don't promote killing animals, but if we did it once, we might as well try and preserve um, what we used it for. So this is actually, I think it's alligator. It's legit. Um, it is deteriorated though. It's kind of dried out. It is fragile. Um, there are some spots where it's like broken and super worn, but you can see that is legit. That is legit the back of some reptile. I'm going to guess an alligator. Um, and then it's also got the alligator handle, some gold or brass, fasteners it does open let me figure out how it opens for you but see it's pulling apart in some places it's damaged it's not for use for sure it's not for use I know the clasp works because I already opened it once um, but back in the day they were so tricky about these things they made them there we go there we go all right so little push button I figured it out little push button right here undoes the latch and then it opens so inside I mean it's not clean it's not really usable I wouldn't promote using it but if you have like a vintage uh, vanity display a vintage dresser display vintage bedroom decor um, this would be super cute for it super super cute um, 
It probably could use some oil or something to keep it from drying out any further so you can use it longer. Again, it's missing. It's just kind of falling apart in some places. So there you can see the leather has come off the edge there. Um, it definitely has condition issues, but very cute for a vintage vanity display. And that one I'll probably let go pretty cheap because it's got lots of condition issues. Okay, next up I found these cool, I think these are it, yep. Very cool set of place markers. So they are mirrored. They're like, uh, I'm gonna say like Hollywood Regency style. I'm gonna guess um, Hollywood Regency was the era, era, era that they came from. Um, by the way, I used to be an English teacher and I love to mispronounce uh, words and make up my own. So you'll probably hear that. It's just what I like to do. Um, I used to do it to mess with the kids, make sure they were paying attention. So these are little mirrored. Oh, it's going to be hard to show you, but oh, look, there I am. See me? It's me recording. It's me in there and in there. I'm in, I'm here and I'm on the recorder and I'm on the mirror. Hmm, look at that. All right, so this is a little glass. They're almost like um, slides for microscopes. They're almost like microscope slides, but it's a little glass rectangle. The back is just matte with this matte panel in the middle. It's mirrored and then you can write the names in the center. It looks like they're written with pencil and I haven't tried to clean them off yet, but I'm gonna figure that out for you before I list them so I can tell you what to do and how to use them. And then they come with these little stands and they sit on the stands and they are little place cards. So what can I show you? How can I use this book? So I'm going to show you how they stand, how cute they look, how pretty they are. So this is so pretty on a table, like a silver and white table or a black table. Um, super cute. They're a little bit dirty. There is some wear of the mirror. I'm going to try and clean them up a little. Um, I'm going to try and get the names off so I can figure out how you should do that. And I can tell you how to do that before they're yours. Um, but there is a whole box, a whole set of hold on and i'll hold them up for you let me get everything put back so i don't lose the pieces there's a set of 12 here in the box and then here are all of the uh what do you call them easels easels that you sit them on the stands they come in the original box they're a glass craft product made in los angeles california from hollywood it says uh, i guess you're supposed to write your name in there or like it's a gift from hollywood but it says from hollywood in there so they must be hollywood regency right um very fancy very pretty so whole set of those and then i have a pile of books that i picked up in the estate sale and they were things um i don't love to buy books because they're heavy to ship and they're hard, they're heavy to store um and they're kind of niche and people are really particular about the books that they want and I don't know a lot about them so I try not to mess around too much in them unless there's something particularly interesting about them um, or they're a pretty color and I think they'd be a cute decorative addition so this one is an English woman's love letters and that interested me I liked the title of it I thought it was pretty um, it's also got a very pretty cover so this side is um, embossed and then has the gold, the metallic gold embossing, but very pretty designs. You can see the title in English Woman's Love Letters. It's also on the spine. The spine's equally pretty. Um, and then there was this like velvety, ribbony, soft textured um, fabric on the end in a really cool green color, pretty green color. So I thought that was pretty. It has condition issues. So there's some fraying of the fabric up here, which we can tuck in while we display it so that nobody knows that we have a ratchety book. Um, and, but then when you open it up, there are all kinds of stories inside. I haven't read any of them. Um, I, don't, I'm not, I cannot guarantee it's PG-13. I did not read them, so I'm not, going to, uh, I'm not going to rate it in terms of appropriateness. I imagine that's pretty appropriate, but didn't read it, but think it's beautiful. Picked it up, thought you'd think it's beautiful too and would be really cute on your bookshelf, in your office, on your coffee table. I really like that. It's just pretty. That's why I got it, because it's pretty. 
And then I have this little book. Um, it appears to be, let's see if I can smell if it's leather. It feels like leather. It's soft like leather. It's got a little music note on the front of it, a little string holding all the pages together. And then inside is a list. Um, I don't know what this index title and played or sung by. So it's supposed to be um, a record of your records. So you're supposed to record in here um, the records that you have and then you would keep it in your record box or with your record collection, with your record player and you would have an index, I guess, of all of your records. And it also has like an alphabetical, similar to an old address book. It's got the alphabetical tabs on there so you can alphabetize. But this person has listed Miss Laura Meyer's tilt top table lamp. It looks like um, maybe people she intends to give her things to or something, I'm not really sure. But it has like names and then household items attached to it. Like she's got plans for those items or maybe where those items came from. I'm not quite sure. She just used it as a tablet. You can use it however you like because a lot of the pages are empty. So it still could be used as a little bit of a tablet. I'm really just selling it as a decorative piece. Um, it says Columbia Records on the front. I like that. You can see it if you get up close. Um, so it's probably a promotional item. Somebody scribbled in it, but we'll see. We'll see how it does. We will see if people love that. Uh, next up we have my friend Flicka. This is a pretty popular title. Not popular in like desirable popular, but popular in that it's around a lot. But I love the cover. Uh, it is hardcover. It's in good condition. And it's just, I love it with the horse and the little farmer boy. It's just cute. It would be cute in somebody's office or a child's room. So I picked one up to make sure that there was another copy in rotation still out there and it didn't end up in a trash can. And then this one. This is another one that, I mean, I think there are more out there. I've looked it up and I saw a couple listed in other places. Um, it's called The Red Pony. And it was first published in 1937. I think this copy is like 1945 or so, but the cover is just adorbs. It's adorable. It's a little little baby horse, really cute. Um, I just love that little horse. I don't know the story. I don't know anything about the story. I didn't do any research about what the book is about. Um, but it's by John Steinbeck, and he wrote my all-time favorite book of Mice and Men, best story ever written. Um, and so here's this cute book, mostly for decorative purposes, but if I read it and love it, I might end up keeping it. And then this cool book I liked. I have not found it in my research, uh, and I have some other Valley Forge pieces that I picked up other places recently, but Valley Forge keeps popping up in my piles. This one is called Life of Washington, and um, it's listed Valley Forge, and then it says in words of one syllable. I'm going to figure out what that means. Uh, and then it's written by Josephine Pollard, or Pollard, and published in New York, but it has a beautiful cover. Historians and history buffs are going to love this one, especially if you like into the Valley Forge and Pennsylvania history stuff. So you can't really see the life of too good, but the Washington really pops. But that's a beautiful cover. It's blue linen cover. It's hard cover. Um, and then in this, oh, 1904. 1904, this was gifted from Mrs. Scheuer to Bayard. I don't know who those people or places are. There's a preface, um, but the pages are in pretty beautiful condition. I looked at it earlier. There aren't any scribbles. There are some beautiful illustrations, um, and it is really the life of Washington. It starts with chapter one, boyhood, uh, youth, the first step to fame, to the front, and then it goes all the way through to first in peace. It's 110 or more pages. Um, the pages are in good condition. You can see that there is some yellowing around the edges. Now, what's not great or ideal about this book is that the spine, the pages, the spine is showing some wear. It's also the pages have started to come loose from it. So if I were to tip this book open upside down right now, all the pages, most of the pages would probably fall out. Um, but here's one of the beautiful illustrations in there. 
This looks like it could be at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Can't be sure unless I do some more reading. Um, but really beautiful book. 1904. Look and see what I can find on that. I haven't done, I haven't done too much looking yet, but super. That's really pretty. Really nice for a history buff. It's beautiful. All right, so I did pick up, I picked up some good books. I'm excited about these. All right, let me move these over. And then I have this pretty tablecloth. Let me see the best way, because it's gonna be big. Um, that has roosters on it. I love it. Um, let me see, I'm gonna fold it a little bit so I can hold it up. So it is, it has cross stitch detail, it's bright red. It has cross stitch detail, there's the rooster. This is all cross stitch. So black and white on red with a little bit of green accent. Big old country rooster. It looks like a weather vane. So I think he's actually standing atop a weather vane. And then there are two other, three other roosters, sorry, one on each side. And then what it says is, has a little saying, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you the whole thing. I will try though. Okay, it says, um, East West Home, Homes Best. Home is best, Homes Best. So East West Homes Best, Home is Best. That's upside down, but it's challenging. I'm trying to show you guys these big linen items. It's a bit tough. There you go. And then on the bottom, the weather vane is pointed south, so the chicken has tipped over. You see there, he's over pecking something off the ground and he's tipped over, so he's a little bit different on the south side. Um, and it's only the south, oh no, the other side too. So on two sides, he's standing upright. The other two sides, he's bent over. So nice bright red. Now, this is, um, it smells musty. I'm probably gonna wash it. I'm probably gonna wash it to get some of the funk out. I mean, it's not funky, it's just musty. Like it's been sitting a long time. It does have some condition issues. So mostly just these little snags and a couple little holes. But if you were to put it on a table and then put your place settings on top, you wouldn't really notice. The other thing I could recommend, I could recommend this, is that you or someone you know who can sew cuts it in half for an adorable set of cafe curtains. Um, tablecloths make awesome little kitchen curtains, bathroom curtains, and I think that would be a wonderful use for this because one, it's, I mean, measure-wise, let's see, it's probably three foot by four foot, three by four, and we don't really have three by four tables anymore. Back in the olden days, they had little eat-in kitchens, right? Instead of big dining room tables, or in, in addition to, they had an eat-in kitchen table and a large dining room table. I don't know if people do that as much anymore. So um, finding the table to fit this tablecloth might be challenging, but finding a window, a kitchen window where this could be your curtains, that would be neat. Um, so there's that. I want to throw that over here so it can go in the laundry. And then here's the rest of our pan. So it's got all the dust from our stuff in there. So here's the pan. You can see it's clean inside. It's, I mean, I would use it to cook. You could definitely cook in it. It's in good enough condition. Um, there's a little spot of enamel missing there. Uh, but the bottom's in good shape. Look at that. And the edges, there's a couple of enamel, a couple spots of enamel missing around the edges. But overall, for a vintage piece, it's in good condition. Um, would be nice for like a re large refrigerator dessert for a picnic um, or a casserole. I've never really baked in this stuff, so I don't know how that goes, but you could Google it. Google it. All right. Um, let's do some of the stuff in the back. Um, cause we're actually running out of stuff already. Uh, so I have this picture. Um, it is not, okay. So I can tell you all of this because I, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to see. I don't really know what this, I don't know if this is, I think this is cardboard. So this is not like a fancy oil painting. I think it is like a reproduction of an older one. 
I think it's done on cardboard. I think it's printed like a printed lithograph on cardboard. Um, I can see if I look on the back, I can see cardboard here, but I don't know if that is just one piece of cardboard and the image is printed on the cardboard or if it's like um, a print with the cardboard behind it to, you know, make it tight, to make it frameable and keep it taut. I'm not sure. I, I'm feeling like it's cardboard. It's printed on cardboard. Um, it does have a signature. It's not signed. This isn't like an original signed piece, but it has a signature and I cannot make it out. It looks like, let me see. Um, Jane something. Um, I know that there's a similar painting to this, like the same style, definitely probably the same artist with a, a little dog they're holding like this, I think, when I tried to look this up. So I'm gonna look it up some more. I loved the subject. I loved the cat because I know you all love cats. Um, and I liked the little girl. She looks happy too often in antique and vintage paintings. The kids look so sad. Um, this little girl looks happy to be strangling that cat. <laughs> because <laughs> she is kind of strangling it. It's kind of funny. Um, so it's in good shape. It's in a solid wood frame. It was a, at one point professionally framed. I don't know professionally framed like by a decorating company or professionally framed because it's some beautiful work of art. Either way, it was once professionally framed. It's got a wire hanger on the back. The backing has started to rip and peel away. It's old and brittle. Um, doesn't really affect the front of it. And then the front, I mean, there's no major damage. There are a couple scratches right there's, uh, yeah, now you can see it. There's a scratch, there's a scratch, but when it's, you can't see it when it's, when you look straight on. Um, so there's a couple scratches in it, but really cute piece if you have like a Victorian room or you have like a collection of cat paintings, a collection of dog paintings. It's cute. I like it. I like the she's strangling the cat. Anywho, there it is, and it can be yours. All right, so I'll, I will get that listed, and I'm also gonna just try and clean it up a little bit. The frame does have some little blemishes, but the, the dirt's kind of stuck in them, so they're a little harder to notice, but I'm gonna dust it off a little. It's a nice frame, solid wood frame, which I always appreciate, always do. I like solid wood. All right, um, next up we have this cool pillow, vintage pillowcase ensemble in the original box. So this is the box it came in. I like that, it's cute. Um, and it still has some of the cellophane, but not all of it. So on here it says, one pair of fancy embroidered fancy. I love, that's one of my favorite words. One pair of fancy embroidered pillowcases all cotton exclusive of ornamentation so that means i'm the english teacher i'm gonna work this out for you it's an all cotton product but the thread is probably not cotton the decoration so it's still in the cellophane these are the pillowcases so um it might they might look like a little yellow and dingy that's the cellophane right here where the cellophane is pulled away you can see they're still nice and white so they're nice and white and they have these pretty pink um, satiny so the the pink thread is kind of shimmery satiny design on each one so it's a set of two pillowcases and then they have this nice oh what do I want to call that I have curtains that are like it eyelet mm, I knew I'd think of it so they have this nice eyelet detail across um, almost like a little border where the the hem of the pillowcase is that make it make them cute too very cute. Nice little set of pillowcases. I would definitely put these on a bed that has pink bedding. Little girl's room, uh, nursery. How cute, oh, sorry, I got this glare. How cute would that be? Those are pretty. And again, they're white this color, not this dingy. This is the plastic cellophane um, that's on the box. So we have that nice set. And I think they're, I mean, it doesn't say what size, but I'm gonna assume they're standard pillowcase size. All right. I had one of these before. Uh, it was a different color, but it's a Swedish modern, Swedish modern chip and dip set. Um, I'm gonna take it out and show it to you. And it's made by Anchor Hawking. This one is in a gold color. The one I had previously was aquamarine. 
and that was pretty. And somebody snagged that one up pretty quick. Um, but it's a smaller chip and dip bowl, which is what I like about it because I hate storing the monsters. I hate monster chip bowls because then like, where do you put them when you're not having chips, right? And so this one is little. I like that it's little. So it's a small one, nice for a small dinner party. And what happens is you fasten, there's this little, if you ever see these in thrift stores, now you know what they are. Cause a lot of times I see them just laying on a shelf um, because they lost their bowls. But this one still has the whole family together here. So this clips onto the side like so. And then the little dip, this is gonna be cute, watch. The little dip sits right in there. So you put your dippy in here, your chippy in here, and it's like one-stop shopping, right? Love it. So this one is a pretty gold color, yellow, yellow gold. And then it just dis disassembles, disassembles for cleaning and storing, and then you can just put one right inside the other. And it comes with the original box, which I always love because it makes storage much easier. Because this is probably the kind of thing you're only gonna get out when you have company. So I'm happy to have that box with it. And we'll pass that box off to whoever the new owner may be. Um, so again, made by Anchor Hawking. These, uh, depending on the color, they go for different amounts. This one I'll probably list for like 15 or $18. The aquamarine ones are a little more desirable because people like that blue color and so they go for a little bit more. Um, yep, so I will get that listed, that three piece chip and dip set. And then the very last thing that we have, um, this one I think is also from my friend Crystal Shop, Swank's New to You in Hughesville, PA. Um, go there, Main Street, Hughesville, if you haven't been there yet. So this is a very cool mid-century modern bar tray, drink tray, hostess tray. Um, it is painted black. The paint seems to be in good condition. The back is also in good condition. I don't see any major blemishes. I got one, I don't even know how to get it up there to show you. I got one spot here that looks like old sticker ick or like you know the sticker ick stayed and then the dirt stuck to it i'm gonna try and get that off for you and clean this up i haven't even dusted it yet so um i will try and get that sticker ick off of there but this is so cute if you are a mid-century modern decorator fan this one's for you um the design is painted cocktail glasses and bar glasses and cocktails in white and pink and gray, which are very cool colors. What I also like is the detail of like, here's the little olive on a toothpick. Here's the cherry at the bottom of the cordial cup. Here's a little like lime or lemon inside that cocktail. This one has bubbles and fizz. This one has, it's hard in the, my direction's off. This one has bubbles and fizz. And then it's got this speckling all around the edges, which is like the fizz of the drinky drinks. Um, it's really cute. If you're a mid-century modern fan, this is very, very cool. Like atomic decor, uh, if you have an atomic bar set, if you are into the atomic style of the 50s, you probably need this. It's pretty big too. It's bigger than um, an average tray, serving tray. Uh, I can actually measure it for you, but it's big. It's not, it's not a typical size, it is larger. So it's 20 and a half inches long and 16 inches wide. So usually they're like 12 by 18 or something like that. So this one is definitely larger than most. It would be really cool hanging on the wall above your little mini bar. So think of it in terms of not just serving and as a place to sit things, but also like hanging on the wall. That'd be very, very cool. All right, so that is everything for today. And I kept it, um, oh, a minute shorter than the last time. So we're at 31 minutes. Glad I didn't take up your whole night or evening or morning. Um, and I hope you come back for episode four. Thanks for watching.